Today, we are receiving an exceptional ocean innovator. He's a founder of We Wear Water and Air. He's an environmental artist and skilled freediver with a great sensitivity for approaching marine animals. He's involved in numerous art and environmental projects that present oceans issues and beauty in relation with mankind. He's, he has been uh, featured in numerous uh, film projects and is working in Martinique for a marine turtle preservation program. Everyone, please put your hands together uh, for Sidney Regis, founder of We Wear Water and Air. Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me on the show today. And I would like to thank you. To, I would like to thank you, uh, Vic and Karin, and all the team of Ocean Innovators for your fantastic invitation. Thank you so much, Sidney. Uh, we will uh, start with a, a small question. Can you tell us in a few words uh, what is We Were Water and Air project and why did you create it? Um, so We Were Water and Air is an artistic, poetic and participative and environmental project around the essential value of air and water. In a few words, this project is gathering materials, photographies, videos, silent pieces, testimonials through digital and real world collaborations to create a one of a kind art exhibition. The end goal of the project is to inspire respect between nature and my kind via the medium of art. So why I create this project is very simple. This project is a continuation of my work as an experimental underwater photographer start, started more than 10 years ago. But above all, I realized recently that it was totally connected to my childhood and my personal history. I come from the French West Indies, from the, the island of Martinique. And as a child, I was shy, very skinny, asthmatic, and very bad in football and all sports anyway. Um, fortunately, I discovered free diving and spear fishing. And I never imagined that one day I would qualify for the freediving world championship. So this extremely powerful connection to nature, to the ocean, to the air has been crucial for me in my life and my vision of the world. So the ocean healed me in a way. So we wear water and air is a way to share this joy of reconnecting with nature and to the others and is a way to give back to my beloved sea. And can you tell us a bit more about the place of ocean conservation in your project? So through my free diving, I developed an expanded awareness of self inseparable from nature. Everything is linked in a way. We inhabit a 80% water body, which evolved on a planet called blue, right? But because it's covered with oceans and protected by a thin layer of air without oceans, Without air, there is no life on Earth. To pollute them is to condemn all of us. So this central idea of we were water and air is to create different artistic forms to make air and water intimate, a big creatures, and omnipresent to the audience. In example, at the end of the interview, about around 10 simple questions about air and water, we ask the participants to hold their breath for one minute. All this breath hold put together become an experimental film that links people from different backgrounds, from different countries and cultures through a simple experience that everyone can live and that you can live to, Vic, holding your breath. Some of the participants changed their habits as a result of this interview. Some of them uh, bought uh, cisterns to collect rainwater, another has switched to solar energy. So I deeply believe that the impact of art can be huge, both individually or collectively. I don't know if I can hold my breath for an entire one minute, but- Yeah, I, I the, think so, I'm sure. <laughs> one of the key questions um, we want to ask is, what are your needs for this project and how can we help you? Um, with a small group, I created an association to develop and promote this project. 
We need talents. We need, uh, we need uh, community managers. We need web developers. We need exhibition spaces to show all the colossal work that has already been done. And finally, of course, we need patrons, we need sponsors to continue creating monumental works and reinforce the message. We did all of this with our own resources, um, but now we need a bit of help. Uh, and I, I need to thank you again for, for your invitation today. And what is the best way to help you, Regis? Um, I think the, the, the best way is to, uh, to connect with us uh, just send me a message and uh, we, can, we can talk about what we can uh, do together. I really think uh, that today we can, we can reinforce the message by working together and to think out of the box and to link uh, concrete uh, your, what you are doing with what I am doing about uh, water and air because everything is connecting. And Sine, our auditors want to know how art is educating individuals on the importance of renewing our relation to our oceans. Um, let's say that for more than 10 years, I have been working with a world-renowned researcher called Damien Chevalier uh, on the preservation of marine turtles. Through concrete action in the field, we realized how much people want to change, but the young generation wants to protect uh, the oceans, but we must accompany them uh, so that they can discover this extraordinary universe, the underwater world. Education is therefore one of the keys, but I also believe in the power of experience, the power of the senses, the power of the body, leaving the sea, leaving the air through art or meditation or whatever is essential. We protect what we love, right? But we love what we know and we need to experience more and art is a powerful language. And can you explain the relationship between water and air and why is it so critical to preserve it? Uh, so water and air are part of the same cycle of life. We must connect them. Life below water and life on land is the same cycle. <laughs> When we protect air and water, we protect everything. So I realize in the conservation field or art or in very, very often air and water are separate, but in nature, they are not separate. These two matters are completely connected. So we where water and air want to fill the conceptual gap between these two mysterious and extraordinary materials. Uh, we all know how critical the threats are. Uh, for example, air quality killed more than 8 million people on the planet each year. 80% um, of the water used by humans is discharged into nature without treatment. This water ends up in the oceans. So more than ever, it is essential to preserve nature by taking air and water as a measure of impact. If we protect air and water, we protect nature, we protect all form of life, and we protect us also. Now, the hydrocahedron project is something never seen before. Uh, what is the next for this iconic sculpture? So for your audience, this is the hydrocahedron, the a small one, okay? So this iconic form and sculpture is a conceptual combination of water and air. Um, hydrocahedron will continue to travel around the world and recently I launched a project that I've been dreaming of about from a long time, uh, linking art and concrete action in the field for the preservation of the ocean. Hydrocaedron since July uh, is an experimental work colonized by coral in Martinique. We have created this work with another association of preservation of the ocean called Assomer, and we hope to be able to replicate this experience with other associations around the world. So in a way to help us is to, yes, okay, I, I do some coral you know, uh, somewhere in Thailand. So we can use this and we can reinforce the message. Uh, so it could be very interesting. So this, with the action, we, it's, it's a question of intimately linking the action of preservation of the coral and the oceans with the symbol of the air 
and the water representing by this. So my dream is one day, maybe tomorrow, <laughs> Hydrocaidon become a pledge of cities or specific places of the preservation of water and air of the ocean and the skies. Thank you very much, Sydney. We will finish with a two second slogan message you would like to give to our audience today. So I would say protecting the oceans preserve the air you breathe. So think about it. <laughs> and there we go. That was Ocean Innovators series celebrating 10 years to achieve the 2030 United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Don't forget to press the bell button to subscribe and we will see you next time.